So the first step is to take your fly line and your butt section. My butt section, I use 50 pound um, Seaguar blue label. This is fluorocarbon. Uh, I don't use Seaguar for my bike guards. I think I've explained that before. I'll show you that in a minute. But the butt section is 50 pound and I use the nail knot tool, which is a phenomenal tool to make the perfect nail knot. And then I also, when I'm done, I uh, hit it with Zappa Gap just to make sure that everything is locked in there good. And like I said, this has never failed on me in nine years. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a nail knot. So with the nail knot tool, I put my 50 pound butt section right on my fly line there. Get it nice and snug, kind of pull tight on it. And um, there's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to use this nail knot tool. It's actually phenomenal. Uh, it does make the perfect nail knot every single time. And then what I'll do now, before I nip it with uh, my clippers, I'm just going to put a little bit of Zappa Gap on it. Oh, there goes the Zappa Gap bottle. Just to make sure that thing is locked in rock solid. That's not going anywhere. Now I can take my nippers and get that right tight close. Because obviously with figure eights, you want to have your knots uh, or your, your tag ends really, really tight. Uh, so they don't really um, mess with your guides. And you could, you could bring the fly line and the leader into your fly rod without any hiccups. So I try to get really close. And that's why I use the Zappa Gap to make sure that's not going anywhere. That's a nice tight knot to bring through your guides for figure eating. So now I've got my nail knot. I've got my 50 pound mono, which I explained before is the Seaguar 50 pound. And I have that on my website and my, um, on my website and on my social media if you guys want to refer to that. So then what I do is I try to make the butt section about um, 16 to 18 inches max. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this to a barrel swivel. And the barrel swivels that I use are these Spro's um, 7, size 7, 75, 75 pound test. Um, and this micro barrel swivel, being that it's 50... 75 pound test uh, goes right through your guides on uh, no problem at all. It's actually probably less um, invasive than a knot. This is my opinion. Uh, it's worked for me for the last nine years, never failed, never had rod problems, never lost a fish. So that's probably about the size of my butt section. And all I'm going to do is just tie with 50 pound. You don't need to get fancy. Just about three turns, maybe four turns the most. And just doing a clinch knot right down to the barrel swivel. Now on the other side of that barrel swivel, I'm going to use 40 pound blue label Seaguar. And again, I have this on my website. There's a link to all these uh, tools that I use. They're all in one location if you want to purchase them. Not for me, but I have them listed there for you. And then I'm just going to put this 40 pound on the other end of this barrel swivel. And the reason why I'm not... Um, snipping these tag ends yet is to me is very important because I've actually have seen this come undone after making your while you're making your leader but what I do is I leave those tag ends so that I can really pull tight on both sides of that barrel swivel and really cinch down those knots before I, I go ahead and clip those tag ends because I want those tag ends to be so so close to that knot but I want to make sure it's locked in there and super tight so i'm going to go ahead and clip these really close and again this is for your figure eighting um and making sure that the whole leader system goes through the guides of your fly rod effortlessly so now that's super tight those tag ends are not moving because i cinch them down and again i'm going to take my best friend mr zappa gap and i am going to just tag those knots really lightly with some Zappa Gap just to make sure it's 
so that's locked in there. That's really locked in there. And if I want to take my clippers or my nippers and get even really a little bit closer, that's not going to be a problem because with that zap, the way I pulled on those knots and those zap a gap brushes, um, this is super, super tight and it's going to go through your guides no problem. As you can see, that barrel swivel is actually less invasive or less of a diameter than your typical knot. That's why I love this. So just to recap so far, I've got my nail knot off my fly line, a 50 pound of Seaguar blue label um, fluorocarbon to the size seven Spro barrel swivel um, with the Zappa gap. And then this is 40 pound. And then from here, I am going to make a, um, a mono non-slip loop knot. And this is so I am going to be able to um, use my flies and, I, and my bike guards, are, I keep them all on my flies all the time and I just do a loop to loop, which I explained that before in previous videos, but I'll show you that here in a second. So I'm just gonna make a, not, a mono non-slip loop knot and I kind of want this total leader before my bike guard because my bike guard's anywhere from 10 to 12 inches. Um, I want the tire leader system up to the bike guard about three feet. That's, my, that's about my average. Um, depending on water clarity, I might go up a little bit, I might make it a little bit longer, but here I'm gonna do my mono non-slip loop knot. And all these knots, both from um, the nail knot to this mono non-slip loop knot, these are all available online on YouTube. Again, this is 40 pound, so I don't need to go too many wraps, it's pretty thick, so I'm gonna do about four wraps, three wraps and then come through, wet it. And the key to this, in my opinion, is getting that wet, cinching down that knot, and then pulling the line, the loop, and the tag in at the same time. And that is super cinched. And as you can see, this loop is about the size of, what would you say, about a half dollar. Um, and that will allow your fly to go there, go right through there smoothly. So again, Zappa Gap is my best friend. And these leaders, um, these leaders will last you a couple years, no problem. I always do check my leaders after every outing, after every fish, after every major snag on the bottom or on a rock, just to make sure there's no um, nicks in my leader system. But that's super tight. Now I can take my my nippers and get that really tight because I put the Zappa Gap on there. That knot is not going anywhere. And that'll go right through my guides um, for figure eighting. And as you can see, that's my whole leader system. So we got the nail knot with Zappa Gap, 50 pound. The Spro 7, size 7 barrel swivel. That's a 75 pound barrel swivel. You're not, that's not going to come, come undone or fail on you. And then I've got a 40 pound section to my loop. And then just to show you how quick this is when you're on the water. Now, right now I have, um, which I've explained in previous videos, and this is all on my website. Um, this is Quattro High Seas. This is 80 pound Quattro High Seas fluorocarbon. Um, excuse the mess, but that's the, um, the bike guard that I use. Huge conversation in the ESOX world, wire versus 80, wire versus 120. Um, this C, this uh, Quattro High Seas, the diameter of uh, pound for pound is a lot thicker than any other um, mono or fluorocarbon that I've seen. And personally speaking, again, a lot of opinions out there, I've never been bit off on this Quattro High Seas. So until I, bid, I, bid, I, I get bit off, then maybe I'll rethink this, but this has been phenomenal for me and I'm more of a purist. I do believe in uh, um, you know, mono or fluorocarbon over wire, but that's all up to you. But here's my loop to loop system. So here's my leader, here's my fly. All my flies have my bike guards on them. I'm just looping it through. And then, like I said, that loop that I make on that 40 pound is about the size of a half dollar. And, and I'm able to get my fly, and you can see that's a pretty big fly right there. I'm able to get that through that loop, no problem. This material, I get from Primo Tail, so primotail.com. You can check those guys out. I get my feathers and my and my um, material through them. Now, the last concept I want to explain to you is the barrel swivel. Why I use the barrel swivel. 
Um, again, all personal opinion. It's all based upon your experience and, and what you like and what you don't like. Again, this system has never failed on me. I've never broken a fly rod, a guide, never lost a fish, and never been bit off. But I'm sure it's going to happen eventually, getting bit off, because sometimes it's just not, not the perfect situation. Um, when the fish eats, sometimes it's a little bit deeper in their mouths. But I, that's why I also like a, a hook at the end of the fly, not on the front of the fly, especially for uh, musky that have bigger teeth and bigger mouths. I feel that if you get this hook on the side of their face or on the side of their mouth in the corner, which is the ideal spot, which happens more often than not, that this here part of the fly, the top half of the fly or the, the top, uh, yeah, top half of the fly is really acting like a bite guard. Um, so it's the, 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 your bite guard is not running through their teeth. And that's why I tend to use a back hook fly versus a front hook fly uh, for muskies and even for pike as well most of the time. But that's, that's the reason for that, that I think it, it, there's a big advantage to that. The second thing I use the barrel swivel for, again, this is just my personal opinion, is when you're casting these big heavy flies, what I experienced when I first got into this sport was a lot of line twisting and the fly just, you know, twisting up your line as it's spinning in the air as you're casting it as you're figure eating it you're catching fish and the fish are twirling and twisting so that's just my opinion i've noticed a difference in using a barrel swivel in the the uh having my line being less twisted and always having to take knots out now i have a lot of friends that don't use barrel swivels and they're just fine but to me it's like a little bit of a safety net and i really prefer so the big thing with this leader system is you really only have to buy these materials once every five years because you're not going to be making leaders every single time you go out. And as long as you put your bite guards on properly um, on your flies, you don't ever have to put another bite guard on unless you get catch a fish or get stuck on the bottom and get some nicks on your bite guard, which I do check my leader system after every fish, uh, whether I'm guiding or with, uh, with friends. And... Um, uh, and every time I get stuck on the bottom. So that's a little bit about my um, leader system. It's on my website, pogopike.com. Um, I'm gonna put this video up on YouTube and feel free to subscribe, would love your support. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out anytime. I love discussing this stuff and, uh, and helping people out. So happy fishing 2019.